Hello everyone. So today I am going to continue the discussion on IDOCS. Yesterday I uploaded a video and I am calling it part 1. So there could be multiple parts on this. So I am sure if you are uh, listening to this video or watching this video then you would have already gone through this video which is part 1 because if you haven't then the video this current video is not going to be very helpful to you so my suggestion is to go step by step and most of the people who are following me through since beginning I think they would be able to understand it better but if somebody is specifically interested in IDOC so probably they should start from uh, this user exit related video because from here I started discussing or talking about IDOCs then I uh, uh, tried to give couple of real time examples on IDOC which, uh, which obviously most of the time you won't get when you try to learn IDOC on your own so I explained some real time examples yesterday so so before I go ahead with the session I wanted to make something clear in, in my laptop I am having just one IDES client one IDES system just one client so I cannot really demonstrate how data flows between one system or from one system to other system or from source system to target system I really cannot demonstrate I don't have access to PI or XI or uh, any other middleware so whatever I am going to explain sometime I will try to debug and show sometime I will try to create an IDOC but then my request to you is please try to understand the concept data coming from outside via middleware automatically creates an IDOC and then what you are going to see it would be an IDOC in the system so you are going to look into an IDOC number so I really cannot demonstrate I really cannot uh, you know, so show how the communication happens between two system so if in case you think then this video is like useless for you you might want to drop off right here but yes trust me if you are with me it's going to be beneficial so all depends on you but then just wanted to give a uh, heads up in advance so <coughs> okay so yesterday I was talking about uh, a scenario like wherein you are placing an order to a web interface goes via a middleware creates an IDOC lot of things happen here and then data is exchanged things it's things are finally delivered another scenario wherein uh, a real uh, retail distributor is there medical medicine distributor so basically communicating to the manufacturer and the sellers so this guy is just a supplier or a big distributor now I want to talk about another scenario which is very similar to this scenario so yeah so this is very similar to this scenario now what happens I have a portal I, I call it let's say a claim submission portal so it was uh, basically uh, there is a client uh, which is into I would say uh, a manufacturing or which is into some kind of technology research for example you have Bose M many of you would have heard of Bose Bose music systems so what exactly they will do or let's let's say uh, we have we have something else let's say we have uh, we have this Dolby related system I mean Dolby sound system so what exactly happens there okay so now Dolby they will just do the R&D at their end and then they will create a technology that technology would be noise free sound so you might have seen uh, Dolby surround sound or you would have seen Dolby Atmos so these things so what exactly Dolby is doing Dolby is just designing the technology and then that technology 
is going to be used by various uh, manufacturing companies like Panasonic, Sony, uh, LG, Samsung and then various other big or small companies. So what they will do, they will take that technology, they will buy that technology from Dolby, they will use it in their system and then they will pay a royalty against every piece they are going to sell. Now they will be having certain kind of agreement. The agreement would be like every quarter we are going to pay you the royalty. So that is a real time scenario. Now what happens? They need to report their sales every uh, every quarter or every month or every week based on the agreement between Dolby and that company. They need to report it and they will be reporting it through a portal. Now the moment it gets reported to the portal, that portal would be connected via uh, the middleware which is PI, SAP PI and then that PI will pick the data and it will create a claim in my SAP system. Okay. So very simple example we have we have let's say sound technology which is used by LG. LG will report it to the portal every quarter. PI will pick it up and it will create an IDOC claim related IDOC. This scenario is very. Uh, this scenario is actually uh, from Vistex module, which is an extension of ST. So we are not interested on module and all, but we are interested on the IDOC concept. Now, so okay, okay, fine. Now, this IDOC is created. Now, technically, in the real time, what we think that when there is a claim which is getting created it will be created in production system and that is quite obvious because most of the time the IDOC would be created in the production system but since whatever they are reporting is actually my revenue so I want to double check it so what what I am going to do I am going to ask this middleware that you don't create this IDOC in production instead you create this IDOC in QA and then my team is going to review this IDOC which eventually would be pushed to production. So I, I'm, I hope you are getting the scenario. So we are creating the IDOC in the key quality system. We are going to review the IDOC and once that that is finalized using a program we will pull those IDOCs, we will co copy the data and then we will push it to production. Something like that or maybe we are creating uh, an inbound uh, claim in we are creating an inbound IDOC in quality just think it in, in, in this way so we are creating an inbound IDOC in quality and then this IDOC is processed the claim is created it's reviewed and then the claim while creating it also creates an outbound IDOC which will be received by the production system something like that so here you can see uh, the concept of IDOC being used and then it's a seamless integration so it can easily communicate between quality and production. So in quality and production we don't require any middleware because both are SAP systems so IDOC can automatically travel using ALE layer from quality to production. Similarly there is another scenario people who are working on working for the company called HCL Technologies. They would be using a system myhcl.in or myhcl.com. That system in the back end, uh, so front end is basically .NET, uh, that myhcl.com and then back end would be SAP. They will be using PI. There would be a SQL server. Data will be exchanged using, using the middleware in some cases IDOC. Some cases it will be proxy and also there are various scenarios possible all you need to do is you need to just try to understand the concept so <coughs> so we are I think we have enough scenarios by now so let's focus on some other thing now while we are discussing IDOC and then I explained all these concepts some of you might be having this question 
and if not then you should have that when we are having BAPI which is actually a remote function call or we are having the concept of BDC which the code we can directly put in a remote function module then why the hell we need an IDOC what we can do we can just call that uh, BAPI from a non SAP system and then we can get the document created for example BAPI sales order create data something so that BAPI we can directly call from non SAP system and then it will do the task it will create the sales order then why do we need an IDOC so the answer would be and then this is for your understanding it may or may not be asked in the interview it's for your understanding so the answer is every time creating a program in non SAP system mapping the data to the BAPI then taking care of the written messages and then uh, doing lot of other things and then basically uh, still having the control in the non SAP system is not a good idea what people want or what users want or what business want they need a very simple concept wherein we have we are having a unified structure like this we we need a field name then we need a field value and then this is going to be my unified structure even if there is a purchase order being created or a sales order being created or whatever is being created we are going to pass the field name and the field value system should be able to map it this data to an internal table that internal sh table should be passed to the function module or the BAPI and the task should be done so we are talking about inbound IDOCs so same thing happens in an inbound IDOC so in an inbound IDOC we receive an IDOC which will have the data in the forms of segments we are going to read each and every segment then we are going to uh, take the field name and field value from it and we are going to insert this in an internal table and once it becomes an internal table so don't you think that it's going to be a very normal task it's going to be passed to a BAPI or some function module which will do the task so same thing we could have done using a report in a report we create a we create a type we create an internal table a work area map the data append into the internal table pass that internal table to the BAPI or RFC or whatever and you, you are done so same way I need a very unified kind of concept wherein I receive everything in a simple format in a unique format it's not changed any time it's going to be same every time and then my program can extract the data automatically from this from that structure from that IDOC and then it should do the task it should create the document it should do whatever it's supposed to so that is something IDOC is basically going to be very helpful so IDOC is again as I said it's going to be very helpful in this case because every IDOC will have the same structure the structure of IDOC is what control record data record and status record that is how an IDOC looks like nothing else so from control we can talk about the systems from data we can read the data and status we can see so the status basically it keeps on adding the status it's like a status history so we can say that uh, when this was initiated when this was posted and all these things so I think okay so so that is something you should be able to understand and then so I got a very good link over the internet and I have put it in this website important knowledge document section is there you go there you'll find the link and I have also updated the process how the setup is done between two, two systems I will be discussing this but only problem is my system will be only one so but we will see we, we need to discuss lot of things uh, so we will be talking about ALE setup we will be talking about direct and uh, background processing of IDOCs we are going to talk about uh, WE09 BD20 lot of other things port 
partner profile so we will be discussing these things and then debug idoc process so we are going to talk about it but then again this session is going to be theoretical again because you need to know a lot of concepts be before actually you can uh, do any uh, real time stuff like programming or debugging idoc so first we are going to understand the concept so please feel free to visit my website and then go to the link important knowledge documents there you'll see this link which is from SCN uploaded by a very good guy Niranjan so very very informative uh, overview and all I'm not going to discuss EDI standards there are certain EDI standards we are not interested that is okay in IDOC IDOC type is basically as I uh, discussed yesterday it's like basic type whether it's a purchase order related IDOC so and then IDOC can be extended for uh, custom fields we will be extending the IDOC okay extension okay IDOC reduction so we will try to discuss all these things segments by now you know the segment segment name field name field value parent and child segment is something like header data item data inbound outbound you know something going out something coming in okay so we have different partners so partner is the business partner with which the exchange of information is to take place using IDOC so as I discussed yesterday it could be a vendor or a customer or a friend in case of text message or any other system so it most of the time it will be either a vendor or a customer so we have a sending partner so it, it's your customer you received an order from your sending partner or customer comes to R3 you saw that you found that you need some raw material and then to complete the order you just created a PO to your vendor so an IDOC went here an IDOC came from here to here a new IDOC was created and went from here to here which will create a PO in his system a PO in this system this guy is creating a SO or sales order in our system now part partner type so different partner types will be there So finally I got the output of this transaction so I executed a transaction WE20 so please make a note of this WE20 is the transaction related to partner profiles but then what I wanted to explain first is the partners we have a partner with name bank or type bank we have benefits provider business partners customer vendor logical system user different user and then you can create your own partners and partner profiles so here you got the option so let's see how many partner types are there I think only these kind of partner types will be there but then obviously in the customization you can create more partners so for now okay so when I create hit uh, when I clicked on this create button it actually tried to create the partner profile so <coughs> for, so for now we have the partners like bank then customer vendor if I go to customer if I open this so you can see that whatever customer we I'm going to have let's say I have I have 10,000 customers 
so I can create 10,000 profiles here under this customer tab or customer folder so every customer profile or so which eventually we can call as every partner profile will be having some kind of unique uh, some kind of unique features or unique properties okay which we will be discussing eventually <coughs> so whatever number of customers you have you create one partner profile for everyone and or you can merge many of them in one all depends on you if the business scenario is same similarly for all vendors you can create like this this is your vendor different vendors logical systems can be created here you have different logical systems then users <coughs> okay now <coughs> okay we'll go back to that link again so part type you know message type as I ex already explained like shipment confirmation notification goods received invoice process code so process code contains the details of the function module which will be used for IDOC processing so as I was explaining which what BAPI or what function module will be used to process that particular IDOC that will be defined in process code port so port is very very similar as the name itself suggests so basically the information about the way data will be sent between source and target so it's, it's like it's going via an internet port it's going via file directory or there is an ALE setup so something like that so <coughs> let's let's go and have a look uh, the transaction is w21 so we have these ports available so whether it's going via a BAP and PI communication or CPIC or file if file then again further details of file or via TRFC transactional RFC or via some XML file so most of the time we will be having an ABAP port data coming via ABAP port or data coming via so here we can expect one TCP IP which is not available so obviously ports can be created uh, different ports can be created by the basis guys it can be created here So control record, data record and these things. Data record will be stored in EDI D4 table and EDI D, D underscore old status in EDI DS. Okay and whenever you have an uh, whenever you have a document which is created by a uh, the the IDOC then there would be an option you will see this symbol there clicking which you can look into the relationship so we will do this as well you know how it happens it will be 0 1 which is generated then ready for dispatch data pass to port in case of EDI lot of other things will happen in case of 
sorry in case of in, uh, in inbound a lot of other things will happen in case of outbound data pass to port ok means it's done okay so uh, idocs can be processed immediately idocs can be put in a queue IDOC searching can be done via uh, WE02 and WE05. So we can WE09. We need to talk about WE09. change the status of the IDOC So whenever you are free, you can just try to go through this link for the theory uh, purpose and then we are going to move ahead with these pending concepts. So sorry I'll just get some water so uh, I'm back but I'm, I'm feeling a lot of pain in my neck so I, I won't be able to continue this video for now so I'll try to catch up once again maybe tomorrow once I'm feeling well so I'm sorry sorry about it and I hope you'll understand <coughs> see you again thank you